So for this, we have these two vectors here. They're written as column vectors. So I'm going to, uh, a lot of the questions are gonna come down to uh, re reducing a matrix with these as a column. So we'll just knock that out beforehand and then uh, we'll see how that applies to the different problems. So we have one, negative two, three, three, zero, one, and these are written as columns. Uh, I'm gonna augment it with zeros for now. And is that always kind of your go-to? Like when you have when you have two and three, is that what you want to go to? Um, I I know is that uh, you, generally you want to write your vectors as column vectors in your matrix, unless there's that most applications that's what you want to do. But I mean, for putting the zeros in here, that's kind of your go-to for all of them. Um, I'm really just doing this because I know in question one, I want to answer are they linearly independent or dependent. Okay. So I'm setting up. This is the corresponds to the equation uh, one, negative two, three. I'll use the alphas and the betas. Plus beta three, oh, one equals zero, zero, zero. So that's the equation that I'm setting up. So this is, if we have a trivia, if we have only the trivial solution, this will be independent. And if we have multiple solutions, which we'll find out if there's a free variable, then we will be dependent. Uh, now, just looking on the uh, dimensions, we have two vectors in three space. So we have not, we have a few vectors in a higher dimensional space. So we certainly have a, a solid chance of being independent. And we can reduce pretty quickly the uh, first column. So we're going to knock out plus two row one uh, minus three row one. <laughs> do those two operations. Okay. So from here, I did the operation on the bottom one also. <clears throat> and then just knock these last two rows down to ones in the first position by multiplying by their reciprocals. So we cleared column one. Uh, oh, I didn't add right. Turns out this mistake won't matter. So I should have minus eight. Yeah, so there should be minus an eighth. Okay. All right. Oh, I see. And then multiply by one sixth and negative one eighth. Yeah. So one two zero zero one zero zero one zero. And then I will use row two, this one, to knock out what's below and above it. So minus three will knock out the top three. Uh, the top middle three, and then minus um, row two will knock out that last one there. So we have the alpha and the beta columns, and I can see that there's no free, there's only two variables, and both of them, I look at these, and I think about these as locking down alpha. Mm -hmm. So that first equation says alpha e one alpha equals zero. And the second equation says one beta equals zero. If you really want to write the third equation says zero equals zero, but we already, that doesn't give us any information. So there's only one solution and it's the zero zero solution. So I can say this. This equation has only the trivial solution in it. So that would mean in uh, linear independence. Okay. And can we, um, maybe on the same page, explain again what linear independence is and what linear dependence is? Um, so if you think about it, uh, adding up linear combinations 
uh, equaling zero. If you're independent, there's one way to hit zero, and that's they're all the coefficients are zero. Yeah. So I set this up alpha times vector one plus beta times vector two equals a zero vector. There's only one way to make that happen. Okay. And that's I, the trivial where you have zero yeah. and zero. Now if you look at the second row, I sort of I could have sort of cheated and looked ahead and said um, this right here, there's zero in this sec in the Y mm -hmm. position here. Mm -hmm. So that would say that this negative two alpha would have to equal zero right there immediately. Okay. There's the only way to hit because I no matter what beta is, I'm not, I'm gonna get zero out of here. Okay. So that meant alpha had to equal zero immediately. Okay. And if alpha is zero, then that this whole vector is like out right there. Okay. And so then how you know this alpha had to be equal to zero, so this is zero times this vector, so that's the zero vector total. Oh, okay. And then beta, there's only one way to you know once that's out, beta is gonna have because those are not zero, beta has to be zero. Okay. But we just row reduced because that's like the proper yeah full way to do it. All right, so it's basically number one right there. Um, now, if the vectors are linearly independent, which they are, find the equation of the plane they span. If they weren't, we would find the equation of a line they spanned. Okay. So you want to think if they were uh, parallel, they would, you know, multiples of each, that's the other way. If you only have two vectors, they're either parallel or not. If they're parallel, they are dependent because you can if they're parallel multiply one parallel you multiply one vector so alpha if we give these vectors names v equals uh, u multiply if, if I can multiply one vector by alpha to get the other vector uh, this is what it means to be parallel and alpha can't be zero okay. alpha is a real number that's not zero if I knew that they were parallel, I could just subtract u. I would get alpha v minus u equals zero. Now, algebraically, you can write it like this. These are vectors. Mm -hmm. You're subtracting vectors, so you're going to get a vector. So really, it's the zero okay. vector on that side. And this, you think of, here's a coefficient of negative one. If there was a non-zero alpha that would work here, this would be dependent because I have a linear combination of two vectors equaling zero that alpha is not zero and negative one is not zero. So that would be dependent right there. Now I know it's not dependent so I better not be getting this situation and they're certainly not parallel just looking at uh, you know there's no way they could be uh, parallel just because the y-coordinates just looking at y-coordinates or if you look at the x-coordinates like I need to multiply the first vector by three to get that coordinate. Multiply negative two by three, you don't get zero. And then certainly multiply this by three, you get nine, not one. So, that's and so you're just looking for like scalar multiples between the two vectors? Because there's only two vectors in this, this problem, dependence comes down to are they parallel or not. Okay. When, but it only works when there's two. If there's three vectors, you have to do work. Okay. Um, but two vectors are sort of the easy, special easy case. Okay. Uh, and one vector would always be considered, unless it's a zero vector, one vector is always linearly independent. All right, so they're not parallel, so I'm not going for a line. So they're not spanning a line. Uh, they're they're sp spanning a plane. So we can draw a picture of this plane real quick. We have two vectors, u and v. What we need to do is find a normal vector. It's gonna be Knock it off. <laughs> uh, so we need to find a vector n. I labeled v in a bad spot. I need to find a vector n that's normal uh, perpendicular to u and uh, v. So that's where the cross product right hand rule you got u, you got v, and your n or your cross product is going to go either straight up or straight down depending on where they're pointing. But either way, it'll work. Okay. So 
n equals u cross v and I need a point on the plane and yeah so I need a point on the plane so I need to find this point p now there's not a point on the plane given uh, but it says uh, find an equation of the plane that these two vectors span the good news is these vectors uh, you can't just choose any point uh, but the plane they span you can write out the plane they span is is every linear combination of the two that's what span means is any linear combination of the two so we can take any point in the linear combination of the two so this is definition of a span And of two vectors, uh, you can easily extend this to three or four vectors just by adding like, more coefficients and all that, is going to be, it's just all linear combos of u and v. So if I write it out in English, it looks like that. If I write it in math, is alpha u plus beta v such that alpha and beta are real numbers or scalars. Can we do um, like C1 and C2? Sure. Instead of the Greek? You don't have to yeah. change it just for, uh, it's a little bit easier for me to process. Yeah. That's what he's doing in the class. Okay, sure. Uh, so this is this is what span is. It's all linear combinations. So again, linear combinations comes up all the time. Uh, what's the easiest number uh, for alpha and beta? Or the or the easiest coefficients? You can pick any real numbers. Maybe one, so like, right? Yeah. One, like two, there's no three. reason to choose like square root. Yeah, three and you know seventeen. You can't right? use zero, but you can use one or you can or use zero. Or, oh, you can. Is any alpha beta? Zero is normally special uh, for different purposes. Like if I was going into looking at parallel, uh, you wouldn't want not want to use zero for parallel. Uh, but linear combinations are any. So can we do an example of zero and then an example of one? Just see. Yeah, let's just go with one and one. How about that? Okay. Just to. Uh, or one and negative one. Okay. So we'll go with, uh, so I'll go C1. We got one, negative two, three, plus C2 of the real one. Um, such that C1, C2, and R. So we're going to pick a particular C1 and C2. We could pick any C1 and C2. So I'm, I would normally say choose C1 to be 0 and C2 to be 0, but we'll go uh, 1 and negative 1, okay. uh, just to pick ones that aren't 0. Um, so again, I could pick any value I want, and we'll be in the span by just the definition. So we'll let our P0 is going to be 1 times 1, negative 2, 3, plus negative 1 times 3, 0, 1. So, one negative two, three minus three zero one equals one minus three negative two. Two negative two minus zero is negative two. Three minus one is a regular two. Okay. So there's our point on the plane. Okay. Um, on some of the homework, it asks for examples of points that are not on the plane. How do you come up with that? Uh, ones that couldn't be written like this. So. That's a little easier said than done. Okay. Uh, so what we're about to do is get a normal. So if you take any point in the plane and move in the normal direction, at not distant, not zero in the normal direction, but one or any number in the normal direction, you're going to be off the plane. Okay. You could also guess a number and... Um, check could you solve the equation uh, you know could, or not you not a number pick any three three dimensional vector and say is there a solution to this plus this equals that vector the problem is if you guess one that's in the plane you may be guessing a couple times and solving linear equations that are actually on the plane okay. now very <clears throat> 
very few points are in the plane. Um, there's a whole lot of points not in the plane. Okay. Um, so chances are, if you just pick a point, it won't be in the plane. Can we run through that on paper? Uh, it, when we're done? Yeah. Okay. So let's write an equation for the plane. Okay. Uh, so we're going to need... Um, we got U and V. We can get N from taking a cross product. Okay. We got... I should write P naught right there. Any point will be in the plane, and I'll just write it as x, y, z. Uh, we're going to compute this vector here. And then we're going to dot product n with this vector. Okay. And we'll call this p. So this uh, you know, dotted vector right here that I drew, make it a little longer. This dotted vector is going to be p minus p naught. So this is that uh, end just comes from n minus start. Okay. So our equation for a plane. Will be n dot. And this is the number zero here because you take a dot product and uh, you get a number out of a dot product. Okay. So this is going to be a equation and it's not a vector equation okay. because a dot product doesn't give you a vector. Dot product gives us a number. Yeah. So this is an um, algebraic, like real number equation, a numeric equation. And the cross product gives a vector. Yeah. So we're writing, this is one of the few times you write, co uh, not column vectors, but row vectors. So our vector u is 1, negative 2, 3. And other vector is 3, 0, 1. So we're doing the i column right now. So it's negative 2, 3, 0, 1 minus j times 1, 3, 3, 1, plus k. Hey, get out of there. Plus k times 1, negative 2, 3, 0. So that is the cross product. And we're just going to do these, uh, you know, sort of going on the diagonals here. So it's i times negative 2 plus or minus 0, because you get 0 here, mm -hmm. uh, minus j times 1 minus 9 plus k is 0. Now I have a minus 6, but it's a minus a minus 6. Mm -hmm. So we get minus 2 here. 1 minus 9 is negative 8, but we're uh, making it negative, so it's positive 8. Negative negative six is regular six. Okay. Those are normal, and all we need is p minus p naught now. So we chose p naught right here. P is any point on the plane. So we need p minus p naught. That vector, and dot that vector equals zero. So P minus P naught. Uh, any point on the plane, there's no uh, P naught. There's no special qualities that point has except it's in three dimensions. So just X, Y, Z. Minus P naught, we chose to be negative two, negative two, two. And we get X minus negative two, X plus two. comma y plus 2, comma z minus 2, so z minus regular 2. And all we do is take this dot n, and then we want that to be 0. So we'll do that on the next page. Negative 
two, negative two, two. Dot x oh. plus two. Y plus two. C minus two. I know, linear algebra is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about it too. <laughs> All right, so when we do dot products, uh, just a really, really fast review. So our dot product, you got it the same dimension, you just multiply corresponding entries in each vector and then add those up. So like this A times X plus B times Y plus C times Z. And then you just add those together and that's your dot product. Okay. So I'm going negative two times X plus two. Sure. Minus two times Y plus two plus two times z minus 2. And I want this to be 0. That's why I have a 0 over here. Uh, so let's go for the dot product right there. So we got negative 2x minus 4 minus 2y minus 4 plus 2z minus 4. Minus 2x minus 2y plus 2z minus 4 minus 4 minus 4 is minus 12 equals 0. Um, you could multiply your whole equation by negative 1 half, just clean it up a tiny bit, mm -hmm. uh, or you can leave it like this. It's either way, it's, it's an equation that represents the plane. And you can see your normal right here negative 2, negative 2, positive 2. It's your coefficients in order. Um, and then that's sort of like your offset. Uh, that if, if I did minus 13, I would be describing a plane parallel to this plane, but shifted some direction. Okay. And it's hard to see which way it shifted without really um, analyzing, analyzing quite a bit more. Okay. So there's our equation of a plane. So once you have your plane equation, you can actually start just picking points pretty fast that are not on the plane. Okay. How are you not on the plane? You have an x, y, z vector that makes this not zero. Okay. So here's an easy one. Zero. So if I want not points not on the plane, and this gets back to the whole definition of what's a graph. A graph is all points that satisfy whatever equation you know or function you're working with. Yep. So how do you get points not on the graph? All points that would not satisfy that. So points not on the plane. Um, Points not side. If you close the curtains, he will be discouraged from uh, keeping bo uh, bothering us. So there's not really a systematic way to do it. I would just, if I was going to pick three, my first point would be X and Y are zero. And then Z is whatever would not make this true. Okay. So if I go zero X, zero Y, my, and I'm writing points, so I should probably go point notation. Uh, as long as I didn't go negative six, I'm good to go. Okay. So we want anything that makes it not zero. Yeah. It's like if we end up with, 24 or anything other than six. Mm hmm. So I'll just write not six. Okay. And you can do that for any one of those. Yep. And there's no reason why I went zero. I only went zero, zero because I'm lazy and it's easy. Yeah. I could have gone. It cancels those out. Yeah. I could have gone uh, one, one and uh, I just didn't want to think. Yeah. So okay. why, you know, why not just go with the easiest one? It's the simpler ones that get me like, I don't know how to find one that's not on a plane. And so it's the simple stuff like that that I'm like, I just get lost on it on the tests. And if it was describe all of them, I mean, you could write it in set notation, all X, Y, Z points that do not satisfy this. Okay. Um, so that would be one way to do it. Okay. So there's points not on the plane. Cool. 
uh, and then really fast equation of a line. Um, if you were to try to find a line, you usually want to get parameterized line, which would be some direction V times a parameter T plus your initial point in the line. Okay. So this would be V, uh, we describe a line. Um, now, if you want an actual like equation like this, that's quite a bit more tricky because it's a one-dimensional object and an equation basically knocks you down. The solution to an equation is one dimension lower than the space it lives in. So this equation is three dimensions, x, y, z, and it's uh, one equation, so it knocks you from three dimensions, it's a two-dimensional object. So you could describe a line with two dimensions, uh, with two equations, but uh, this is a parameter, this is the best way to do it right here. Okay. And what kind of a question would ask to where I would need that for an answer? Uh, what's the equation of a line span, uh, where one vector is spanning it? Like, parameterized equation for a line. Uh, that's the span of one vector. Okay. Pretty easy to sort of draw it out. And if it's a span of a vector, that means zero is, is a point in there. So pick P naught to be zero. All right, number three is find a non-zero vector that if you add it to these vectors, you will still be linearly, your set will still be linear, linearly dependent. So find a vector, we used U and V, we'll find a vector W such that uh, the set u equals 1, sorry, 1, negative 2, 3, 1, and w. So we want all these three vectors are dependent. And so basically we want them to equal anything except 0. Oh, we can actually choose a zero. A zero vector is always an easy one to throw in if you're like, ah, oh, that'll be dependent. Any set that has a zero vector in it is going to oh. be dependent because just thinking of that, uh, where are we at? Yeah, uh, either of these right here, you could just think the span. Uh, you want one solution, the, only the trivial solution to this equals zero. Uh, if this vector is zero, I could pick anything I want for beta and it would still uh, be zero here. And so alpha could equal zero, beta could equal like 42, and you're zero. Okay. So the cheap way is to throw in the zero vector. It would be automatically, throwing into any set would be uh, dependent. So you can always add the zero vector. And then for answering that on the test, would I write down these two vectors and then put the zero vector next to it? Oh, I have to read the question. It says find a non-zero. Oh, find a non-zero vector. So I guess we can't add oh. that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Minor technicalities. So we still want to be linearly dependent. All right. So we're not going to add this. So W is not going to be the uh, zero vector now. So this is what we want. C1U plus C2V plus C3W equals zero. Uh, for some C1, C2, C3, uh, real scalar numbers, uh, not all zero, uh, but we get to choose W. Now these questions can seem scary because you're supposed to pick stuff out of thin air. That's what gets me. And how do we pick stuff smartly out of thin air? Because we get to pick the vector w, why don't we go with 1, 1, and 1? 
we have free choice on W. Like there's no there's no no restrictions in here. Find a non-zero vector. Um, so we're gonna let C1 equal. We're choosing now. So we have U plus V plus W. I just chose the easiest ones I could think of. Subtract uh, W to the other side. Um, or maybe, yeah. Uh, you know, let's subtract U and V to the other side. That's W right there. So I'll just put in U. Uh, 1, negative 2, 3, minus 3, 0, 1. So minus, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Positive 2 minus 0 is, is 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. So there you go. Cool. There's, there's a whole lot of answers to this. I just chose 1, 1, and 1. I could have gone any other... And so dependent means it doesn't matter if it's in there or it's not in there. That set of equations is represented either way. Is that correct? Like you can remove the dependent. You won't lose anything out in the span if you take your dependent vector out. It, it adds nothing to the span itself. Yeah. Okay. Now if you start, if you can sort of isolate, ah, I can make this vector from the other two, then this vector you can take out. You know, so for each vector you take out, you want to say, can I... Is the span still the same? And so if, if you're dependent, if your set's dependent, you can always take one vector out, at least. Okay. And if, you know, maybe I had five vectors in a three-dimensional space, I would at least be able to take out two vectors. So it's kind of you can just kind of recheck your set. And that's dependent, right? Like we can pull that out and put a set of zeros in there when you have two of them that are equivalent? Yep. Okay. I just want to be sure it's not true. So that will, yeah, like the solution... As you do operations, you're going to find that you know your third constant is going to be free right there. I can see right away. Okay. So C three is free, okay. uh, which means you're dependent because you can pick it to be one, and then whatever your C your other two constants are going to be is your way well, you can add it up and get zero without the trivial solution. Okay. All right. So there we go. And I could have picked any, uh, now if you go 2, 2, 2, 